Hello, I'm Terry Brady. I'm a software developer with the California Digital Library. I'm going to talk about how you can integration test your legacy Java microservice using the Docker Maven plugin. Now I'm uh, stopping my video recording to help uh, the screen capture work better uh, later on in the presentation. Uh, but here's the challenge that I was facing. My team supports seven Java microservices that are each deployed with Tomcat. Our, co our code is more than 10 years old, and while it has some unit tests for testing specific functions, we don't have good automated testing for the bulk of our microservice functionality. We, a couple years ago, we built an end-to-end -end test suite that tests all of our microservices together using Docker Compose. That's been really helpful, but we found we would like to have some automated testing that's bound to each of our code repositories. An additional challenge we faced is most of our functionality really requires you to make an invocation to Tomcat in order to execute the core functionality. So here's what I was hoping to achieve. I wanted JUnit tests for all of our microservice functionality. I wanted those tests to be executed by Maven. I wanted all test resources to be recreated and destroyed each time a test cycle is run. And ideally wanted code coverage calculation uh, once the tests were complete. So the first step was to say, well, let's build some unit tests. Um, it turned out looking at our code, each of our microservices would need some significant refactoring to support quality unit testing of our code. So our next step was to say, well, what about writing uh, our tests as integration tests? And we were excited to find the Docker Maven plugin. What this plugin does is in the pre-integration test phase of a Maven build, it starts one or more Docker containers and you configure those Docker containers within the um, plugin configuration inside your pom.xml file. Really interestingly, the plugin has been written to say any exposed ports you make in those containers will be assigned a random or incrementing um, high port number and this helps you avoid uh, container port collisions. And when all the tests are done, all of the containers that were started in the pre-integration test phase are stopped and removed during the post-integration test phase. And I'll admit this, I never was really a fan of Maven, but um, this setup gave me a whole new appreciation for what Maven can do. So I have these seven microservices and each of the, these microservices needs one or more of the following containers. MySQL with a schema preloaded, cloud storage with storage buckets predefined, Zookeeper for queuing requests, and then a mock microservice to um, simulate responses from other external microservices. Additionally, some of our um, tests require us to have a database and cloud storage with some pre-existing test data present when the tests begin. First um, step we took was to try to run these integration tests as a standalone executable, making use of those dependent containers. So we'd start all of our dependencies during Maven startup, and then we would um, invoke our test suite. It turns out the way our code is written, um, you can't really invoke meaningful functionality without um, sending a get or post request. And we attempted then to bundle all the integration tests into an embedded Tomcat instance. We were not successful with that. So at first we were starting to get disappointed. Then I discovered that, you know, what we could do is in addition to starting all of our dependent containers with the Docker Maven plugin, we could also start a separate Tomcat instance with the Docker Maven plugin. And within that Tomcat instance, we mount a war file containing the code that we wanted to integration test. Uh, we then, the bulk of the integration tests essentially invoke microservice endpoints um, in order to test all of the main pathways through the code. Now the one downside of having the code under test running inside of a Tomcat container was, 
we lost the ability to act, calculate the actual test coverage that we achieved, but we decided that was not a deal breaker. So how do you use the Docker Maven plugin? Well, first you create your integration test containers with all the you know, preset uh, dependencies that you need. So I'm gonna show you a, a very simple example where we uh, pre-build a Minio uh, cloud storage container with a predefined storage bucket. Um, next, you then um, add the Docker Maven plugin to your pom.xml file, and inside the configuration for that plugin, you configure one or more containers that you wish to start. Um, next, you uh, modify or configure the Maven failsafe plugin, which runs integration tests, and inside that plugin, um, set up any environment variables that will link to the exposed container ports. Um, that you might need in your integration tests. Then lastly, you write your integration tests and inside those integration tests, be sure to use the environment variables that were created. So here's a gist that shows this information at a high level. So I'm gonna pop over to that. So um, what I'm showing here is an illustration of um, extending the Minio Minio Docker container to create a directory with a single test bucket and then start the Minio container using that directory um, as the bucket, the directory of buckets for the Minio container. Um, when I wrote these instructions up, I instructed the user to tag this image as dspace slash Minio IT. And you'll see that I make use of that image tag in the Docker Maven plugin configuration. So here I've got the Docker Maven plugin in a pom.xml file. The pre-integration test phase will start a series of containers. And here I've got those the images defined. So here I've got this image we've tagged as dspace minio IT. I'm giving it an alias of IT server. And I am um, setting a variable minio IT Dot port to contain the um, exposed port number to be used to access this container. Also, a delay of two seconds has been set up to wait uh, before executing any tests. And then at the end of the test phase, the post integration test phase will stop these containers. Our Maven failsafe plugin configuration um, takes that Minio IT port and makes it an environment variable, Minio IT port, that can be accessed um, from the integration test code. So write your integration test, but sure to make use of any port numbers that you have exposed through environment variables, and then run Maven verify or Maven install to execute the test suite. Um, here you'll see that during the startup phase of the um, or the, the pre-integration test phase, the container is started. And then after the tests are complete, you'll see that the containers have been stopped and removed. And if for some reason you're running your Maven build on a box that doesn't have Docker configured, you can set a property dash D docker.skip and that will um, ignore the steps that start and stop uh, Docker containers. So now I want to show you this in action uh, with um, a real case. So I have a pom.xml file that creates a test WAR file. So it's a test version of one of my microservices. This particular microservice requires um, three dependent containers in order to run. It requires Zookeeper, Mock Merit IT, which is a, a mock um, of other external microservices, and it needs a cloud storage container, um, Merit Minio IT. And this is a cloud storage container with predefined storage buckets. Lastly, uh, the pom.xml file starts a Tomcat container, and that Tomcat container mounts the test war file that was built as a volume. And then when Tomcat initializes, it loads that test war file and um, makes it available. I've got a set of integration test code that essentially call endpoints within this test war file. And additionally, I have a Docker compose file 
that starts the exact same set of containers, but I use this to allow me to interactively test and debug my integration test suite. So the same Docker Compose file mounts the, the test war file, and I really like the VS Code interface for running individual JUnit tests and then launching debug sessions um, against running containers. So let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to go over to VS Code. Inside of VS Code, I'm um, inside my Docker tab, and this allows me to view any Docker containers that are running. So here, what I want to do is I'm going to run the Maven Verify step. And what this is going to do is, you know, build any dependencies that need to be built. Then we're going to get to that pre-integration test phase. It's going to start the four containers that I described to you. And we'll see those containers get started um, here on the Docker tab. It will then execute seven integration tests. Uh, essentially, each of those integration tests calls different endpoints uh, within the um, application running in Tomcat. And then when the tests are complete, the containers will be destroyed. So here you'll see um, the Maven has started up the set of four containers I described. You'll see those four containers are running. And now Maven tells us that the tests are executing. These tests take um, maybe almost a minute to run. So we'll give, give that a second to, uh, to run. A nice thing uh, within this Docker extension of VS Code is you can um, view the log files for any, any individual container as it's running, all launched from this interface. My seven tests were successful. The four Docker containers are stopped and removed. Uh, we see a success message, and you'll see that those containers have been stopped. So that's the Maven execution of these tests. And just to show you additionally what I can do is I can run my same set of containers through Docker Compose. Uh, so I've had to doubly define all of my containers, once in the pom.xml file, once in the Docker Compose file. So my four containers are running. I'm going to go to the testing tab of VS Code. And from here, I am going to launch my seven integration tests. And again, as we saw before, this is going to take close to a minute to run. A uh, nice thing is you can interactively see which ones are yet to be run and which ones um, have been completed. Also, by running this in VS Code, you can attach a uh, debugger to the Tomcat container and um, you know set breakpoints inside the code as it's running inside of Tomcat or you can set breakpoints in your um, integration test code itself. So each of these tests are successful, so my integration tests are complete. I'm going to go ahead and stop my Docker Compose stack. You'll see the containers are being brought down, and if we go back to the Docker tab, we'll eventually see that those containers are done. So did I achieve what I wanted? Well, I have JUnit tests for my microservice functionality. Um, all of my tests are being executed by Maven. My test resources are being recreated and destroyed each time I run uh, the test suite. The one thing I don't have is the code coverage calculation. But overall, my team's code is in a much better place uh, than we were before we wrote these integration tests. So I hope uh, you found something useful um, here. and. Uh, Thank you very much for your time.